Hi guys, so as promised, here's a beginner's tutorial for Illustrator on the iPad. Okay, so let's start off by easily importing an artwork into the app. I've already included mine and then I reduce the opacity. Now I want to jump right in into the features that are included in the Adobe Illustrator app. So first off, there's a layers panel where you can find all of your layers by tapping on this right hand corner and you can see all of the layers here. You can select layers, you can hide them and you can lock them. So this is the layers panel. It's pretty straightforward and it's very similar to the Adobe Illustrator on the desktop. And then there's a selection tool, which is the tool that allows you to select parts of your artwork. And then we have the direct selection tool, which allows you to edit paths for your vector objects. So here you can see I can grab the anchor points and edit them by grabbing the handles, moving them around by selecting the direct selection tool. You can also select on this little circle that pops up and pull it down and it'll create more of a curve for that path. You'll also notice as you're going through Illustrator is that this little menu will pop up below when you're selecting certain features and this is the menu option for the direct selection tool. So here you can do smart delete which allows you to delete an anchor point without breaking the path. So that's pretty straightforward and then you can also select a anchor point and convert it to a corner and then this allows you to make a very sharp corner just by tapping on the convert to corner. You can also select in an anchor point that maybe it's already a corner and then you can convert it to a curve. So it just simply allows you to create an anchor point into a curve by giving it handles. Another option in this menu is the cut path. So if you select this, it'll delete an anchor point on the path to cut that path, just like I did here. You can also simplify a path to have fewer anchor points. So once you select this, there'll be less anchor points within that shape. So now let's actually jump into vectorizing your art and using the pen tool. So I am going to use the pen tool here. So simply just select the pen tool and then you can just drop and drag your points wherever you want. You can, you know, just kind of put them wherever you want by tracing your original design or you can hold down to create curves just like I did here. Once you hold down, it gives you handles that you can edit and then you can grab the selection tool and kind of move around your artwork. And then you also have another selection menu that pops up and this will this one will give you different options you can reduce the opacity of the selected object you can adjust the size of the stroke as well you can also change the stacking order of the selection in this case i only have one selection so there's not much changing of the order here um, you can also lock a selection as well you, you can also just simply select that selection you can also group and ungroup a selection. So obviously you have to have multiple items selected to group or ungroup. And then you can duplicate as well, which is super easy. Just simply grab it and then tap the duplicate and then you can delete it. So those are pretty much all of the menu options for the selection menu that pops up. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the opacity for this one and then create that inner portion of my R. And I'm going to start by creating it using the pen tool again. And once I've created that shape and adjusted the anchor points to fit my letter and style, I'm going to select both of those shapes and tap on the combined shapes on the right panel. And then I'm going to select at the very bottom, exclude overlap. And this will give me that inner portion of the R. And once I've done that, I can go back and select the direct selection tool and then edit my anchor points to fit more nicely and adjust the letter as needed. So going back to the combined shapes panel, there are different options here that give you different options to edit your shapes. You can combine them all. You can, you know, make sure that they are excluding portions of the shape. So that's the combined shapes panel. And then we have the pencil tool. So which this can also be used to create a vector path by simply drawing. It's a little different than the pen tool where you're kind of picking up your pen and placing it where you want your anchor point to be. This one, you just kind of hold down and draw whatever you want. Draw the shape, draw the star. So in this case, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna draw a star using the pencil, the pencil tool. And it's not as precise as the pen tool, in my opinion. I would say that the pen tool is a bit more precise um, so that's the pencil tool for creating a vector shape. And then you can also use the blob brush as well, which you can just simply just paint on a vector path as well. And you can see here, I'm just drawing on the star. Again, I can reduce the stroke of it so it's not so blobby like. Um, but again, I do think that the pen tool is just a more precise tool to use for vectorizing your artwork. 
but then again you can still use the pencil tool or the brush tool to you know create those vector shapes but i do feel like the pen tool is a bit more precise and like you can see here when i created the star using the pen tool it does look a bit more precise um and the next thing you can do is you can use the eraser as well to erase parts of the path um, so that's really simple and straightforward as well um, you can also create shapes using the shape tool. You can draw a circle, a star, a rectangle, or a triangle. So in this case, I'm just showing a circle, but yes, you can create all of those other shapes as well. You can also include type and add type to your work and edit it with the properties panel on the right side. With Adobe Illustrator, you can import type from the type kit on their website. So I noticed that they're calling it Adobe fonts on the website, but yeah, you can import and access thousands of fonts from that website and use them in Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. You can also edit your artboard in this panel and select different artboard sizes, which is pretty straightforward as well. You can also import photos and documents into your artboard. You can also grab items from your cloud documents as well. So that's really intuitive and helpful. And then selecting colors, using gradients, creating swatches and using the color dropper as well and with adobe illustrator it seems like it already includes some color books like pantone books and different color swatches that you can use um, like cmyk so that's also included in this little panel for the colors i don't really understand it that much but yeah those are the colors and it also um, has your files that you've probably saved on adobe creative cloud you can also select a shape and swap between the colors by tapping on this little arrow button in the middle between the two colors and then it'll just swap between the colors. Um, and then going back to the property panels on the right side, it's just simple property panels. And then you have a precision panel where, a lot, where it allows you to select a grid or smart guides for your artboard. And by snapping to grid, it just essentially makes sure that the letter snaps to a grid. And if it's not, it won't snap. Um, and then smart guides as well. You'll see these little pink images or lines will pop up to show the smart guides. Um, and yeah, and then with the grid, you can choose a square grid or you can choose a dotted grid you can adjust the color of the grid you can reduce the opacity of the grid so that's really helpful because i know that adobe fresco hasn't yet incorporated a grid into the app skipped over a couple of these because we've already went over them but now for the edit this is a simple one just cut copy and paste easily clicking on this little scissors on the right side um, so you can just select it copy it cut it paste it I know there's shortcuts. I know right now just the only shortcut I know is the double finger tap to undo. And then you have the align panel, which allows you to align, distribute, and flip objects. So if I select all of these four letters, the your, and I tap the align to the top, they'll all align to the top and so forth. So you can select different um, settings for that. And then object settings, obviously, which we've kind of already went through, adjusting the opacity, the stroke, um, and then you can also group items as well. You can create clipping masks. You can create stroke outlines and more. So that is the object selection tool. And then um, I haven't yet learned how to create a clipping mask, but I will definitely be teaching that in a future video. And then there's the type panel, which allows you to edit and style your type, which is pretty much just how to create the type on the artboard. So following a path or not. Um, and then you can select the path panel to edit your paths, which we've already gone through as well with editing the curves and so forth, which is pretty straightforward as well. And then you'll see these settings are on the right side as well, as well as that little mini menu that pops up right below the selected object or shape. And then you have the repeat panel, which allows you to create patterns using radio grid and mirror repeat options, which I will show you how I do it in this tutorial because I think it's a really, really cool feature included in Adobe Illustrator. So let's actually try the repeat tool. So for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the glasses of my little drawing here. And I'm just, you know, using the pen tool to create the glasses. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the hair because I can't see the, the glasses. Um, but I'm going ahead and creating the glasses using the pen tool. And I'm going to speed this portion up just so that you can kind of, we can get to the mirror portion of this. Um, but again, I'm just creating the glasses. I'm going to create the inner portion of the glasses as well. And then I'm going to combine those shapes to make the glasses. So here you see me just creating the glasses, the inner portion of the glasses. Um, and then I move on to white because it's harder to see with the black. Um, and then, you know, you use the combined shapes tool 
to exclude that inner portion of the glasses. And then I added my little dots in the left hand corner to add the little style to it. So once I've done finishing the shape, you're gonna select all of your shapes and group them as an object. So they should be grouped and then select the repeat panel and select mirror. So now you'll see your art is mirrored on the right side. Um, and then you can adjust the sizing, but it's a really cool feature that I actually really, really like for Adobe Illustrator. And I'll also definitely be testing it out for creating patterns, especially for licensing work. This would probably be a great tool for licensing patterns as well. So a really great tool to check out. Let's end with a quick tip. So double tap on an anchor point to make it a curve or a point. Um, you can also do this while you're drawing as well. So while you're drawing with the pen tool, you'll see that it automatically creates curves, curved paths by creating handles. Um, so if you tap on that anchor point, it'll actually remove the handle on one of the sides. So I'm going to tap it here and then you'll see that it'll remove it. So there's a curve here, but once I tap on that anchor point, I'm going to tap it it'll remove that handle. So now I'm having a corner type of path. So now it's not super curved. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments.